Hey, algebra students. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about adding and subtracting radical expressions. And here's how I want you to treat this lesson. First of all, you need to understand that you can simplify radicals like we've done in previous lessons. So if you see a radical that you believe has a perfect square factor in it, you need to get those perfect square factors out. 9, 4, 16. You know, anything that's uh, the perfect square of a simple number, 25, you need to look for those perfect square factors and get them out. Okay, so that's one thing you're going to need to be watching for all the time. Be vigilant, okay? Hey, just looking at the practice here, this number, 75, has a 25 in it. That's going to square root out, so I pull a 5 out. Um, up here, uh, let's see, I have a number 48. That has a 4 in it. It also, I remember, has a 16 in it. Those are going to square root out of those numbers. 250, uh-oh, there's a 25. 160, there's a 16 in that. Okay, so look for those perfect square factors. The other thing you have to remember for this lesson, you are going to treat these radical expressions like they are variables. Okay, so once you have them in their um, simplest form, once you have them in their simplified form and you've pulled out all perfect square factors, then you need to treat them as if they were like X or Y. And anything that applies to what you do with X and Y, the variables, applies to these radical expressions, all right? So you need to make sure you're paying attention to that. For example, let's take a look at letter A. I have some radical expressions in letter A. 9 square roots of 5 plus 8 square roots of 5. By the way, I'm going to recommend when you read these, you read them just like I read. Not 9 times the square root of 5 plus 8 times the square root of 5, although that's the correct way to say it. If you say it, 9 square roots of 5 plus 8 square roots of 5, it helps you keep track of what you're doing. 9 times the square root of 5 plus 8 times the square root of 5. Well, this is just like, this is honestly just like if I was doing 9x plus 8x, except x instead of being x is the square root of 5. I can't do anything with the square root of 5. But I know that it, whatever that value is, that's the square root of 5. I can punch it into a calculator, get an approximation, and it's just this weird value, this decimal value. <clears throat> well, whatever, whatever that value is, I have 9 times that value plus 8 times that value. Well, that's going to equal 17 times the value, the square root of 5. And the way I, I conceptualize it is if I have 9 square roots of 5 plus 8 square roots of 5, and I'm just putting them in a big pile of all of my square roots of 5 that I have, how many square roots of 5 do I have in that pile? If I had 9 of them and I'm adding 8 of them, that gives me 17 of them, okay? Just like, like I would read 9x's plus 8x's. How many total x's do I have? 17 x's. That's how we're going to work these problems. So this one should be 17 times the square root of 5. Bingo. Let's move on to our next radical expression, uh, letter B. In letter B, we have 11 times the square root of AB minus 23 times the square root of AB. Doesn't matter that there's variables under the radical. Uh, I can't I can't do anything with the uh, variables under the radical. I cannot simplify because neither of them are squared. So I just have to treat them like a variable, like I would any variable. I'm going to treat it as a unit, the square root of AB. So what I'm going to do is what's out front? 11 minus 23. So 11 square root of AB minus 23 square root of AB. Uh, that's going to be... Uh, let's see, 11 minus 23 is negative 12 square roots of A, B. That's going to be the answer for letter B. There it is. All right, let's move on to the next one, letter C. Okay, now what do I do when I have different variables? What if it was 5x plus 3y? Can I combine those? Because I'm adding, the answer is new. If I was multiplying, I could combine them. Uh, if I was multiplying these, I could combine what's under the radicals, but I can't because we're adding them. I have five, whatever the square root of seven is, it's this bigger number, and the square root of two is a smaller number. I, I can't, there's nothing I can do to combine these together because five of these isn't compatible with three of these. So the answer to this one is exactly what the problem says, five square roots of seven plus three square roots of two. 
Now, here's a, here's something tricky. But sometimes when you can't combine them, you have to just simplify one of them so that you can combine them. Thing is, this one can't be simplified either. So it's just the same thing that the problem says. I can't combine them. Letter D. Hmm, can I can I do this in a fraction? Let's find out. Uh, 3 over 5 times the square root of 2x plus 2 over 5 times the square root of 2x minus 1 over 5 times the square root of 2x. Now, did you hear how I read that? This is like saying 3 fifths of whatever 2x is, square root of 2x is plus 2 fifths of whatever the square root of 2x is. Well, 3 fifths plus 2 fifths we, of something we can do. Even if it was 3 fifths a plus 2 fifths a, that's 5 fifths a. We can add the coefficients together, okay? We're going to treat this to, in the same way. Um, the other thing that you can do with a problem like this, maybe it's easier in this case, just because the denominators are all the same, I could just add the numerators. So this is going to be 3 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. I just realized there's an x there, so I'm just going to go through and put in that x, x. There we go. Okay, now... Um, 3 times the square root of 2x plus 2 times the square root of 2x is going to be 5 times the square root of 2x minus the square root of 2x. Um, by the way, this is all divided by 5. By the way, I could rewrite this problem so it looks exactly like, <laughs> like this. I'm going to just do what's in the numerator. Okay, so this is going to equal. And then uh, on top, I have 4 square roots of 2x. Divide, and, and I'm just going to keep my denominator the same, divided by 5. Let's see if we got this one right. We're just treating it like any other fraction, addition, and subtraction problem. Keep the denominator the same. Do whatever needs to be done in the numerator. Add and subtract. All right, letter E. Letter E. Um, 4 times the square root of 3 C, 3 C squared minus 8 times the square root of 2c squared. Here's where things get a little bit tricky, but not hard yet. All right. So 4 times the square root of 3c squared is the same as 4 times the square root of 3 times the square root of c squared. Can any of these square roots be evaluated right away? Why? Yes, they can. The square root of c squared is just c. If I square c and then take the c square root of it, I just get the original variable. So this actually just becomes 4 times the square root of 3 times c minus 8 times the square root of 2c squared. Same thing here. with uh, So this is the same as the square root of 2 times the square root of c squared, right? Anytime things are multiplied under the radical, we could just put a separate radical in front of each thing. And then the square root of c squared is just c. Okay, okay. Let's see if we let, let's see if we can simplify this at all. So this would be four square roots of three times c minus eight square roots of two times c. Now, I would say that that is um, as simplified as it gets. Um, however, I'm just wondering if they factored out. Like one of the things we could do in this one is factor out the c. I want to see if they did that. Um, Nope. We're going to rewrite it though. Um, I was, so the best way to write these ones is put the coefficient that's not a radical first. Any variables go after that. So it's 4c times the square root of 3. This, the radicals always go last. Okay. So I'm just going to put the same thing here. Um, I'm just going to rearrange the order and I can do that with multiplication. It's commutative. 4c times the square root of 3 minus 8c times the square root of 2 can't be combined because I have different numbers under my radical. Hey, one other quick thing. I could have factored out a C. This could have been C times in parentheses, four square roots of three minus eight square roots of two. All right, letter F. In letter F, we have negative 11 times the square root of 10A plus three times the square root of 250A plus the square root of 160a. Now I'm looking at these and I'm realizing uh, there's going to be some simplification that happens here. 250 is the same as 25 times 10. 
So I'm going to change this to 25 times 10, okay? And remember, because it's under a radical, it's going to be the square root of 25 times the square root of 10 times the square root of A. I'm just going to leave the square root of 10A together. 160 becomes the square root of 16 times the square root of 10, because 160 is 16 times 10. So it's going to be the square root of 16 times the square root of 10A. I can simplify 25. Be, the square root of 25 just becomes regular old 5. The square root of 16 just becomes regular old 4. And now let's just see what I have here. Negative 11 times the square root of 10A plus, I, I'm going to simplify, 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 15 times the square root of 10A. Well, if I add, I can add those because they have the same number under my radical, square root of 10A. That becomes 4 times the square root of 10A plus 4 times the square root of 10A because I still have my 4 times the square root of 10A over here. So plus 4 times the square root of 10A. My answer is 8 square roots of 10A. Let's just make sure we did that right. Bingo. All right. Letter G. Letter G says, find the perimeter of a right triangle if the lengths of the two legs are the square root of 12 meters and the square root of 48 meters, and if the hypotenuse is 2 times the square root of 15 meters. What am I going to do? I'm going to add square root of 12 plus the square root of 48. Um, and then uh, we need to, let's see, in addition to that, we need to add 2 times the square root of 15 plus 2 square root of 15. All right, can I simplify this at all? Well, 12 is 3 times 4. So this is going to be the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. 48, now I know 48 is 4 times 12, but 12 is 4 times 3. Uh, the square root of 48 is actually 16 times 3. So it's going to be the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And then I can't touch 2 times the square root of 15. There's nothing I can do to that one. I can simplify these, though. Let's see, the square root of 4 just becomes 2. Uh, square root of 16 just becomes 4. And I have to leave this one alone. Uh, I can't add all three of these numbers, but I can add the first two numbers. 2 times the square root of 3 plus 4 times the square root of 3 is 6 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 15. All right, and then letter H. Uh, the la Oh, let's just check our answer there. Make sure we're right. 6 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 15. All right. And then lastly, a rectangular garden is square root of 27 a squared feet wide and square root of 75 a squared feet long. What is its perimeter? Uh, that sounds like I'm going to do a lot of adding. Let's go ahead and get to that. So for letter H, it's going to be 2 times... 20, uh, the square root of 27a squared, okay, and then that's going to be plus 2 times the square root of 75a squared. Now, let's see, can I simplify any of these? Well, 27 is 9 times 3, so this becomes the square root of uh, 9 times the square root of 3. 75 is, is 25 times 3. So this becomes the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And then I just I just simplify the square roots as I can. So it's going to become 2 times 3, because the square root of 9 is 3, times the square root of 3. Oh, hold on, I forgot one. It's the square root of 3a squared. The square root of a squared can be brought out front too, because it's just going to bring out an a instead of a squared. All right. Plus... 2 times, well, the square root of 25 is 5, times a again, because this a is going to have its square root taken, times the square root of 3. Okay, so this simplifies even further. It becomes 6a square root of 3 plus 10a square root of 3. That means that the perimeter of my garden is uh, 16a. Notice that a is a variable. So if I have 6a squared roots of 3, and I add 10a squared roots of 3, I don't make it a squared because I'm not multiplying. I just bring the variable along. a squared root of 3 has to be exactly the same in both of these for me to add them, and it is. It's going to be 16a squared root of 3 as an answer. Let's just double check. There we go.